First, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos, who is uh, attending this uh, hearing virtually. This is just a continuation of, the, of our previous public hearing held last October 5, 2020, on the MUP pension bills referred to this committee, which was suspended with the commitment that an actual study, actuarial study would be conducted by the government service insurance system or the SIS, together with our key stakeholders such as the Bureau of Treasury and the MUPs, among others. Just to refresh our memory, last year and this year's appropriations reflect the veracity of this serious financial concern given the steep increase in the MUP's pension funding from 80 billion in 2020 to 120 billion under the 2021 General Appropriations Act. Among the many proposals from the Department of Finance is the cancellation of automatic indexation. In this regard, we may have to request for a legal opinion from the Department of Justice on whether or not Congress can diminish or reduce the benefits already being received by existing pensioners, as well as those who are already in the service. Last week, 25 January 2020, our office received the actuarial study on, of the GSIS on the updated results of funding requirements of the existing retirement scheme of the MUP as of 31 December 2019. The numbers from the updated study tell us the, that the daunting scenario that the estimated seed fund needed for the proposed pension system is about 9.6 trillion pesos. In order to fund said seed fund, the study suggests that Congress needs to appropriate more than 800 billion annually or 20, uh, for 20 years if no changes or reforms are made on the pension system. The yet to be completed actuarial study has also taken into consideration the one-time infusion of the proceeds from the total sales of the MUP assets, which at present is pegged at 14.98 billion, with the note that the MUP, uh, that other MUP services have not submitted the appraised and assessed value of their assets. To date, only the PNP, BJMP, Philippine Coast Guard, uh, including the AFP, uh, who submitted their, uh, the list of their assets just now <clears throat> have submitted the uh, list of their assets. Now, to give us a clearer picture, we have also invited a representative from the Bureau of Internal Revenue to provide at least the zonal valuations of the various properties. Moving on, the GSIS actuarial study used 27% as the mandatory contributions of which 18% would come from the government share, while the other 9% is from the MUP, MUP's personal share. This figure resulted in a reduction of 5.94% in the total pension requirements. By examining the summary of results of the sensitivity scenarios after excluding the no or limited indexation scenarios, it appears that there are two other schemes that will result in a substantial reduction of the estimated total funding requirements. A, mandating a minimum pensionable age of 56 years of age, and B, pegging the salary increase to only 5% per year rather than 10%. Now, these are among the points of this course that we wish to center on in today's joint public hearing. With that, uh, the chair, the chairperson would like to recognize and acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. Secretary Delpin Lorenzana, I saw him earlier. Oh, represented by uh, USEC uh, Reynaldo Mapago and Vice Admiral Eric Kagawan, are you there? Secretary Año is represented by Undersecretary Bernardo Flores Jr. and Undersecretary 
Rico Judge Echeverry. The DOJ is represented by attorney Anna Liz Lisset Manito and attorney Norlisa Manlangit. The DBM will be represented by Miss Mary Rose Aguilar and Miss Mary Joyce Zamora. The DOF is represented by Assistant Secretary Maria Teresa Habitan. The Chief of Staff and Forces of the Philippines will be represented by Major General Adriano Perez Jr., General Rene Honasan, General Reno Tolentino, and Captain Naida Yoro. This is from the judge, you know? The PNP will be represented or is represented by General Roque Eduardo Vega, General Jose Nartates Jr., and Police Executive Master Sergeant Alexander Jimenez. Uh, General Sinas is present uh, online, attending online. Also, General Sidney Hernia the Director of PNP Retirement and Benefits Administration Service, or PRBS, Admiral George Ursabia, Jr. of the Philippine Coast Guard, Alan Soliano uh, of the BJMP, yeah, Director Alan Soliano Iral. And then from the BUCOR, Chief or Chief Inspector. Anyway, Neil Dionisio Boat. <clears throat> the Namriya is represented by uh, Commander Carter S. Lumaang. And the JSIS is represented by Attorney Lucio Yu, Jr., Attorney Giovanni Lin Kikoy Marin. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrongly, no? Mr. Geoffrey Reyes, and the uh, Treasurer of the Philippines is a, a Treasurer, Rosalia de Leon, present, ma'am. Anyway, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. So that's it. And the BIR is represented by Mary Gretchen Mondragon. So with that, let us begin. I understand that the AFP Oh, I would like to also welcome the presence of our distinguished minority leader, Senator Franklin De Leon. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the committee hearing. So I understand that the AFP uh, will present uh, the list of their total assets. Are you ready to present <coughs> the armed forces of the, the DND, for that matter, Department of Defense? Who will present? Uh, we are not prepared, no, Mr. Chairman. Because we just uh, we are just assessing this week uh, the assets because you called me, I think uh, late last week, and uh, we need uh, this week to uh, get all the assets all over the Philippines, Mr. Chairman, and uh, we will be ready to present to you sometime uh, this week, maybe Friday. Thank you, uh, Secretary Dell. Uh, for that matter, let us hear from the JSIS. So the other members uh, of the committee and the other research persons will be uh, properly briefed uh, on their uh, actual study that, that they conducted. Please go ahead, yes, IS, or the uh, treasurer. Mr. Chairman, yes, IS will present. Yes, please, yes, IS. Good morning, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Attorney to show you. Uh, thank you for inviting JSIS. First, the study on There are some interruptions. Kindly check again your connection. Okay, now, Mr. Chair. Yes, it's a uh, morning. Uh, may, better may, now. I, may I request uh, Ms. Jenny Lopez to present the, the simulation study? Jenny. 
Hello, good morning. Uh, here we're going to present the additional scenarios on the 2020 study on the retirement scheme of the military and uniform personnel. The data is based on uh, 2019 year-end data. Next slide, please. So the, this study was conducted to update the actuarial study on the existing retirement scheme of the uniform personnel based on data as of December 31, 2019, taking into consideration a one-time infusion of the proceeds from the total sales of the MUP asset. So this is an additional scenario to the latest study of, on the total estimated funding requirements, which was presented last December 7, 2020. Next slide, please. So the one-time infusion is based on the following appraised or assessed value of the assets submitted by each branch of service of the MEP. So the PNP have 12.91 billion, the BJMP 2.01 billion, the PCG 0.06 billion, so a total of 14.98 billion. Uh, the AFP, BFP, BCOR, and Lambria, uh, the data are not yet available. Next slide, please. So the main purpose of the actuarial valuation is to provide an estimate of the liabilities resulting from the retirement system's promised benefits as of a reckoning date. So this includes estimating the total cost of all benefits for active members and pensioners. So the total cost of the expected benefits for all active members and pensioners was estimated by taking the actuarial present value at the valuation date of all future benefits. Next slide, please. So for active members, the actuarial liabilities as of December 31, 2019 is based on the present value of future benefits due to past service plus the present value of future benefits for future service. And for the retirees, the actuarial liabilities as of December 31, 2019, 2019 is based on the present value of future pensions. Next, please. So the data used in the study were those which were provided to us by the different uh, branches of services. It must be noted, however, that the results of this actuarial study were based on a specified set of assumptions, like the decrement rates, as well as the interest and the discount rates. Next is the scope and coverage of the study. Next, please. Next slide, please. So, uh, based on the given data, the total active membership of the MUP as of December 31, 2019 is 402,086. Now, 48% of this came from, are from PNP and 37% from the AFP. The average monthly salary is about 39,687. So we see here that the average monthly salary of the AFP, the BKMP, the NAMRIA are about 
that of the average. And the average years of service of the active members as of year end 2019 is about 10 years. So the average years of service for the AFP, the BJMP, and the BUCOR is a bit higher than the average. And the average setting age is 35 years. Next, please. Now, uh, the total regular pensioners as of year in 2018 total to 196,004. Of which 131,115 are retirees from the AFP and 55,563 retirees from PNP. The average monthly pension is 39,520, which uh, approximately uh, more or less approximates the average monthly salary of 39,687. Then the regular, uh, the average attained age of the regular pensioners is 64, and the average age at retirement is 48. Next, please. Here we have the total number of survivorship pensioners as of December 31, 2019. So we have a total of 93,172 uh, coming from AFP, about 52,418, and from the PNP, 36,350. The average monthly pension of the survivorship pensioners is uh, the average pension is about 24,305 and the average attained age is 63. So for this study, we have the following key assumptions. Next slide, please. So for the active members, we have the assumed rate of retirement, disability, separation from service and death. And for the pensioners, we have the assumed rates of debt. Then we have a 7% investment rate of return and a salary increase assumption of 10% per year. Next slide. Uh, this slide shows the key assumptions used. So for the benefits based on the existing retirement schemes, then there is no contribution. Uh, also shown here are the decrement rates table used for the, in the study. And as I've said earlier, a salary increase of 10% and an interest rate of a salary increase of 10% and an interest rate of 7% per annum. Also, the study took into consideration automatic indexation and pension eligibility of 20 years and retirement at next higher rank and a pension based on final salary. On the addition, these additional scenarios, uh, we also consider the one time infusion based on the appraised or assessed value of the total assets submitted by each branch of service of MUP amounting to 14.98 billion. Next, please. Next, please. So here, if we consider the 14.98 billion, 14 billion one-time infusion, the initial uh, funding requirements based on the status quo condition of 9,617 billion will be reduced to 9,602 billion. Next quote. So this slide shows the annual amortization of the funding requirements for 20 years, 25, 30, 35, and 40 years. 
So for example, if we amortize uh, the funding requirements under the scenario with one-time infusion, that is uh, 9,602 billion, the annual amortization for 20 years is about 847 billion. So this is a decrease of about 1.32 billion from the 848.39 billion annual amortizations for 20 years if you consider the status quo condition. Next slide, please. Um, this slide shows the simulated liabilities for the years 2021 to 2026. So this considers a scenario with one-time infusion and the funding requirements amortized for 20 years. So the funding requirement here is the not is, is based on status quo, which is nine thousand six hundred seventeen billion. So uh, this simulation uh, also consider the uh, DBM pension projection for the years twenty twenty one. To 2026, as shown in row B, and the projected contributions based on from the government's share of 18% of base pay plus longevity pay, as shown in row D, and the projected contributions from personal share of 9% of base pay and longevity pay as shown in row E. So uh, for year 2021, we consider the first uh, amortization of 833 billion. Then we less the DBN pension budget for 2021. So we have a total liabilities for the year net of the pension budget of 706 billion. Then if you consider the total projected contribution of 51.70 billion, the total liabilities uh, less, less contributions for the year is about 654.41. So this is the total liabilities for 2021 that is not covered by the DBM, DBM pension budget and the projected contributions for the year. So for 2022, again, here we consider the second uh, amortization of 833 billion. Then we left the DGM pension budget for 2022, which is 133 billion, so a net of 700 billion. And taking into consideration the projected contribution for the year of 56.70 billion. The total liabilities, less contributions, and the DBM pension budget is about 643 billion. So that is the total liabilities not funded by the pension budget for the year and the projected contributions for the year. Then the accumulated or the cumulative total liabilities as of 2022 is therefore the uh, total liabilities for the year, which is 643 billion, plus the previous year's 654 billion. And we do the math for the following years for 2023, 2024, 2025, and 2026. So, as of here in 2026, of the amortized uh, amounts, about uh, 3,781 3, billion are not covered by the DBM pension budget 
uh, from 2021 to 2026 and the projected contributions for the same period. This is, a, this is the 3,781 billion. Next, please. So following are the sensitivity scenarios. So this slide shows the sensitivity on interest rates. Now, if we look at the scenario with one-time infusion, the base case is at 7%. So if uh, the interest rate assumption is reduced by 1% to 6%, the funding requirements of 9,602 billion will increase to 12,648 billion. So in general, if we decrease for every 1% decrease in interest rate, the funding requirement will increase by about 33.88% on the average. And on the other hand, if for every 1% increase in interest rate, the funding requirement will decrease by about 25.15% on the average. Next slide, please. So uh, this slide shows the sensitivity on salary increase. So if the salary increases at the rate of 5% annually, the total estimated funding requirements would significantly decrease by 62.86% or that's uh, 6,045.61 billion. So given the total appraised or assessed value of 14.28 billion, the funding requirements would further decrease to 3,556 billion or 63.02% from the initial results of 9,617 billion. Next slide, please. Oh, this slide shows the sensitivity on varying types of indexation. So the base case is uh, with full indexation. So under the scenario with one-time infusion, if we have the indexation, the funding requirements of 9,602 billion will be reduced to 4,779, which is about 50.22%. And if no index indexation, the funding requirements will be reduced by about 68.22%. So from 9,602 billion to 3,052 billion. And if we assume uh, no indexation, but then we uh, assume a 1.5% pension increase, the funding requirements will be reduced to 3,401 billion. So that is about 64.58% from the 9,602 funding requirements based on full indexation. Next slide, please. Now, this slide shows the uh, varying uh, membership application of indexation. So the base case is the indexation is applied to active members and pensioners. So under the scenario with one-time infusion, the funding requirements is, as I've said, 9,602 billion. If we apply the indexation to pensioners only, the funding requirements will be reduced to 4,639 Billion. So that's a reduction of about 51.68%. And 
And as I mentioned earlier, no indexation is about 3,052. Fifty-two, three thousand fifty-two billion. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, shows the amortization, the amortization of the funding requirement. Uh, if you consider the automatic indexation applied to existing pensioners only. Okay. So, applied to pensioners only. So, here we see that for 20 year amortization, annual amortization under scenario A, which considers uh, no. Wherein we did not consider the one-time infusion, the 20-year annual amortization is 410 billion, a decrease of 400 a decrease of 437 billion from the uh, original amortization based on the status quo of 848 billion. But then if we consider uh, scenario B, the 20-year amortization is about 409 billion. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows the sensitivity if you consider the actual rank of the member at retirement. So uh, the impact of this is a reduction of about 5.9% from the 9,602 billion funding requirements. So this is reduced to 9,035 billion. Now, if we consider a contribution rate of 27%, the funding requirements with one-time with one -time infusion, the funding requirements will be reduced to 9,013 billion which is a decrease of about 6.13%. Next slide, please. Uh, here, uh, the current retirement age of the MUP is 56 years. Now, if we assume 60 years as the retirement age, the funding requirement will increased slightly by 0.97%. Next slide, please. Now, uh, this slide shows the effect of the imposition of a minimum pensionable age of 56. So given a compulsory retirement age of 56, uh, the MUP will receive uh, his or her pension uh, upon reaching the age of 56. So under this scenario, with one-time infusion, the funding requirement of 9,602 billion will be reduced by 40.76 percent. So to 5,000, that's 5,687 billion. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows the summary of the sensitivity scenarios that uh, we have seen earlier. Uh, in this slide, this considers this uh, did not consider the one-time intuition. So uh, the impact of no indexation. The impact of no indexation 
is um, that's 68.11 percent so a reduction from 9,617 billion to 3,000 to 3,052. Then, uh, based on actual rank, based on actual rank, the funding requirements will be reduced by about 6.04%. And if you use the minimum amount of pension of the AFP of 90% of base pay and longevity pay, the funding requirement will increase by about 2.21%. And if we adopt the age of retirement of 60, the funding requirements will increase by uh, slightly by about 0.82%. Also, in this slide, uh, the annual amortization for 20 years, 25, 30, 35 years, and 40 years are presented. So, in scenario one, in scenario five, scenario five is just a combination of scenarios one to four. That's no indexation. Up based on actual rank, maximum amount of pension of AFP of 90%, and age of retirement at 60. So the funding requirement will be reduced by about 69%. Then if we consider a 27% contribution, this will be further reduced. Uh, the reduction is about 75.28%. Now, another combination is Scenario 7, which combines Scenarios 2 to 4. Now, uh, ito po ay walang, uh, yung no indexation ay hindi considered here. So, uh, for Scenario 7, the funding requirement will be reduced only by about 4.28%. And if you consider Scenario 7, uh, plus uh, 27 contributions, the funding requirement will be reduced by 10.22%. Then, uh, if the minimum, if we apply the minimum pensionable age of 56, the funding requirements will be reduced by 40.86%. And if we um, maintain a salary increase of 5%, the funding requirements will be reduced by 63.02%. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, is similar to the, first, to the earlier slide, but this one considers the one-time intuition. So, uh, for this scenario five, scenario five is the combination of scenarios one to four, no indexation, actual rank, uh, maximum amount of 90%, and retirement age at 60. So, the funding uh, requirement, uh, there's a reduction of 69.34%. So that's from 9,602 billion to uh, 2,948 billion.
And if you consider uh, the 27% contribution, the this will be further reduced to 2,377 billion. So that's a reduction of 75.28% from the uh, 9,602 billion. And for scenario seven, this is a combination of scenarios two to four. The reduction in the funding requirements is 4.28%. So that's from 9,602 billion to 9,205 billion. And if you let the contributions, this further reduced to 8,634 billion. So that's a reduction of 10.22% from 9,602 billion. So uh, if we apply the minimum pensionable age of 56, then this is a reduction of 40.86%. So that's from 9,600 billion, uh, it will now be 5,687 billion. And a salary increase of 5% assumption uh, will reduce the funding requirements by about 63.02%. That's all for. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, GSIS. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how we look at the numbers, considering all the scenarios presented, talagang overwhelming. But, you know, we really have to confront this. As Senator Dillon would often uh, uh, remark, uh, as of now, we don't know how to resolve this issue. In fact, you know, different scenarios as presented, you know, parang masira ang ulo natin lahat dito how to, uh, how to resolve this issue. Yes, uh, Minority Leader, Senator Rilon? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with your with due indulgence, allow me to intervene. First, let me acknowledge the effort put by the GSIS in trying to figure out a way out of this very messy situation. Uh, you know, this problem has been swept under the rugs for decades. And uh, at least now we have a chairman of our committee who's willing to confront it. Uh, that is the first step to solving the problem. And uh, I think, Mr. Chair, the role of the Senate and Congress for that matter, being a policy body, is to make a policy on this. Is it our policy uh, to uh, ultimately uh, integrate and fund under a funded retirement plan our funded retirement fund, the retirement plan of our uh, men in uniform, um, military personnel in uniform. So if the answer is yes, at least we have the GSIS who will provide us with the technical assistance. Mr. President, I'm telling you, I, I, I am confused, but at the same time concerned about what we have heard. But uh, again, this is a, a technical presentation. To be candid, it is difficult to absorb this in the 30 minutes that it was presented. May I suggest uh, something if the chair will, will accept it? As the next step, knowing if, if the chair will agree with the policy thrust that we should have, or that we should uh, leave you, relieve our national budget of the annual burden, which is getting heavier and heavier every year, and move it to a funded retirement program, whether with the GSIS or another fund. I would like, if 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 I may, if I may put forward, if our policy is really to 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 move this out of our national budget, then I would propose that the GSIS advise us. First, what is the most realistic assumption? There are so many assumptions uh, made. And uh, um, since this is a very technical issue, 
uh, may, may uh, I am submitting to the chair the following. First, that GSIS gives us or recommends to us what is the most realistic assumption. And uh, given what is the uh, uh, most realistic assumption from where they stand, they give us the most um, uh, 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 the most feasible uh, plan and the estimated funding requirement. If we have agreed on that, uh, and then so we go back and and and, and present to to and and go back and say, all right, this is what is recommended by the technical people as the most uh, uh, realistic assumption. And under that scenario, this is the funding requirement. And that is my suggestion in order to be able to move forward. But let me uh, let me place on the record, Mr. Chair, that this is that this presentation uh, goes a long way into starting to find a solution to this very difficult problem. That's my submission to the chair, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Gerlon. Uh, Mr. Chair. As a footnote, ano, yung, while we really give credit to the GSIS for uh, making this, uh, the, the whole scenarios, different sensitivity scenarios, but this actuary study is yet to be completed. Why? Because other MUP services have failed to submit Oh, the list of their total assets. So they just relied on the uh, uh, submission of 14.98 billion as submitted by the PNP, BJMP, and I'd like to hear from the AFP. Of course, the AFP submitted just now. You know? uh, we received the uh, uh, list of their assets today because I gave Secretary Lorenzana a call uh, last week if uh, they can at least submit before we start the hearing today. Now, the BFP, and we'd like to find out from them, because as I remember it correctly, during our last uh, hearing, last October 25, they committed to submit to the committee the list of their assets. And GSIS and the Bureau of Treasury cannot complete whatever actual study they will conduct unless they have a complete picture of the so-called one-time infusion. So am I correct? Uh, with my uh, observation, JSIS, uh, na pagkulang ang data, hindi rin kompleto yung actuarial studies ninyo, di ba? Yes, Senator Dillon. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, we need that uh, data from the AFP and the other offices which would have assets in order to support this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the funding requirement. My submission, Mr. Chair, is that this is, this yes, this is absolutely necessary so that we will know what is the initial available assets for the initial funding requirement. And I underscore initial. So that once we know what is the initial funding requirement and we know what is the initial available assets that can, uh, that, that can be used to, for this initial funding requirement, then we will know how much we have to provide in the national budget over a period of time, given what is recommended to us to be a realistic uh, assumption and a realist, uh, including uh, the, 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 which would include all the pension requirements, et cetera. My, my submission, Mr. President, is that for purposes of the actuarial requirement, the assets would affect the initial funding requirement. The total requirement or the total liabilities over the years would be determined by the, uh, by, by, by the age uh, of retirement, by the salaries, by the initial, uh, by the automatic uh, uh, increases, uh, uh, retirement age, etc. But I would repeat, the assets is critically needed to assist us in determining what is the initial funding requirement that would have to be funded uh, uh, in the budget. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. As I uh, mentioned in my uh, opening uh, remarks, 
yung seed fund pa lamang, ang kailang, ang requirement is 9.6 trillion. And this was validated by uh, the briefing, you know. Uh, and in order to fund that seed fund, yung study nila suggests that Congress needs to appropriate more than 800 billion annually for 20 years. Kung stand alone, kung magre-rely lang sa, sa GAA. So that's the reason why the GSIS came up with different scenarios for Congress to consider. Ano yung best scenario? As you uh, rightly uh, suggested uh, and uh, asked, ano yung best scenario that would fit into this uh, difficult situation, uh, to solve the difficult situation? Now, I'd like to hear first from, of course, AFP nagsabit today, ano? BFP. Why did you fail to submit in spite of your commitment last October 25? BFP, may we hear from you? And Mr. after BFP, Bucor and Amria. Anong Sorry, reason ninyo? Mr. Chairman, si Amy po, andito ako. Yes, uh, Senator Amy. Yes, uh, yeah, you have the floor. Um, we had a bicam, but I was monitoring the uh, the uh, presentation of the GSIS and I await the presentation of the BFP and the other delayed presentations. Nevertheless, I think... Uh, as uh, Senator Gillon and yourself have continually uh, bemoaned, the truth is that we keep kicking this can down the road. Eh siguro, hindi naman na premature na ipresenta na ito sa ating economic managers ngayon pa lang para makita nila yung extent ng problema because it's uh, no use uh, to a degree, it's a pointless exercise churning out all the numbers when there's no sorority or commitment on the part of our economic managers to finally grapple with this problem. I think GSIS has already uh, uh, regurgitated sufficient data and information uh, to make a preliminary presentation to our economic managers through uh, Secretary uh, Lorenzana as well as the chairman Para once and for all, malaman natin kung talagang bubunuin na natin itong problema to o talagang uh, uh, patumpik-tumpik lang at uh, laging pinopospone. Sana siguro dapat uh, maka-meeting na yung ating mga heads. Thank you, Senator Amy. So, BFP, when, okay, i-modify ko yung question ko. When can you submit the list of your assets? And when do you do submit, I would suggest that you furnish the BIR, particularly yung kanilang asset valuation division or unit, ano? para isang uh, parang one-time computation na lang, and this data would be could be submitted to JSIS para makompleto yung kanilang actual study. AFP, I would suggest the same, na yung sinabit ninyo sa committee, bigyan nyo na ng kopya yung BIR, Para magsabay-sabay uh, na simultaneously, magkaroon na ng valuation sa mga assets na nilista ninyo. So, BFP, Bucor, and Namria, when can you submit? We'd like to hear from you. BFP first. Yes, sir. Uh, we will be submitting the consolidated list on uh, Friday, sir. When you submit to the committee, isubmit nyo na rin yung kopya, isang kopya sa BIR. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. And also to GSIS, ikapi par ni Chunal Hat. Para in the next hearing, kumpleto na yung uh, ipi present dito sa committee. Because this is problema natin lahat ito. Ha? This is not just a problem of, of the Congress, of the Senate, and of the committee. No, sa amin, ang easy way out is cancel uh, automatic indexation. Period. Would you like that to happen? That's the suggestion and submission of the DOF. Easy way out, cancel automatic indexation. Wala na. So, Friday, Bucor, when can you submit your list of assets? Sir, Friday, sir. Uh, can we be given until Friday, Your Honor? Okay. That's a commitment that uh, you should comply with, huh? Kasi last time, ganyan na sinabi nyo. Sabi nyo, one week eh. Namria. Uh, good morning, sir. Friday rin, sir. So I will repeat, ha? bigyan nyo na rin ng kopya yung BIR. We invited them yes, here. Sir. Sila kasi yung uh, maggagawa uh, ng valuation for submission to JSIS para makompleto because we cannot see the, uh, the uh, whole picture eh. 
Ang nakita lang natin, ang assumption, ang premise is a one-time infusion of 14.98. And then from there, nagawa ng mga maraming senaryos. So pag kompleto yung submission, mas accurate yung, uh, yung, yung mga senaryos na ipipresent ng GSIS. And assuming that you, uh, BIR, assuming that you receive the list from this uh, MUP services, when can you finish the evaluation for submission to uh, GSIS? BIR, please. BIR? Okay, while, while waiting for the BIR to respond, yes, I yes, assuming that you have all the data from the, all the MUPs and the evaluation uh, has been submitted by BIR, uh, gano'ng katagal nyo may present ulit sa committee yung uh, completed uh, scenarios? Yes, I yes, please. About uh, three weeks, sir, upon receipt of all the information. Thank you. That's uh, reassuring enough. And as a matter of fact, may track record naman kayo to complete the, the actual study uh, uh, that, uh, that passed. Ano? So, question, yung kaninang ni-raise ko for DOJ. Meron ba tayong legal problem and we need your legal opinion on this? Ano? May meron ba tayong problema if we diminish or reduce uh, the pension or the amount that the pensioners uh, are presently receiving? Good morning po, Senator Lacson. Yes, DOJ. Uh... Yes po, uh, right now po, uh, we defer answering the question as our position, a draft position paper is still subject to review. And once signed, we will just submit for official position paper on the matter. Ms. Anderson, may mga jurisprudence naman dito. And yes, uh, we will defer to your uh, uh, legal opinion once uh, it is submitted to the uh, committee. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you po, sir. Sa GSIS, Anong basis nyo doon sa ginamit nyo doon sa 27%? And also, going further, yung 18 and 9%. Paki enlighten lang yung committee. Ano yung naging basis nyo for using 27% as the mandatory contribution? Uh, tapos 18% would come from the government share, while 9% sa MUP. Uh, ano lang, for our uh, enlightenment? The the 9% po is based on pares lang po siya yung sa ating mga civilian, that's the 9%. So, yung 18% so ni, uh, kumbaga sa government share po nakapatong the rest na 18%. But then, this is based po dun sa mga proposals na nakita namin. The yung 27%. Ma'am, don't get me wrong. I'm not questioning the, uh, the wisdom. Uh, gusto lang namin uh, ma-enlighten nga kung bakit yung mga numero yung ginamit. Yung, uh, yung, uh, bakit yung ginamit yung mga numero na yun. Thank you. So, the 9% po is based, uh, paras lang po siya doon sa ating uh, civilian um, uh, contribution, which is yung employ employee share na 9%. Then, yung 18% po, uh, for the government share, which is kung yung counterpart po siya ng uh, civilian na government share, nagdagdag po doon ng uh, additional premium to take into consideration yung hazards na bali po, doon po siya naka uh, sa government po siya naka 
naka kumbaga yung burden po na additional contribution na hindi ma ma ma-assume ng member is nasa government po. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, the bill filed by uh, Senator Bongo, and uh, he took this up with me yesterday uh, while we were in the session hall. If new entrants to the service will be the only ones covered, to, uh, or yun yung kailangan lang to establish this seed fund, anong impact naman ito? How much will be appropriated per year by the national government? Kung yung new entrants lang ang makocover, ma'am. Sir, pag-aaralan pa po namin yun. Significant ba yung magiging uh, effect kung new entrants lang? Because that's one uh, question of the uh, bills referred to the committee. Kasi uh, po sir, uh, kukonsider po doon yung salaries of the new entrants. Also, uh, if ano po yung profile ng new entrants natin, so kasama po yun doon sa mga titignan to come up to, to come up with the funding requirements if you consider only the new entrants. I have here some uh, data, Mama. No? Yung creation of new position, uh, yung actual 2019 is for 4 billion. So this is uh, 4 billion, 332 million, 381. So kung kukunin natin yung 9%, uh, nila something like wala pang 400. Uh, thereabouts, mga 400 million. Oh, based on that data, ano yung magiging uh, impact, ma'am? You don't have to uh, give us numbers, no? Uh, Pakidescribe nyo lang ano magiging impact to sa present scenarios that you provided. So, bali po, Yung 400 million is the contribution of the employer, of the uh, MEP member to the fans. So, bali po, yung 400 million is the contributions of the new entrants. Meron yata naka-unmute dyan, naririnig sa background from, other, from the other participants. Yes, 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 kindly respond. So, bali po, the 400 million is those, the contribution coming from the um, members. The new entrants. Ma'am, may, may construction ba dyan sa lugar ninyo? <laughs> Pasensyas na po, meron pong gumagawa dito. Okay, sige, I understand. Okay, sige. Pasensya na po, sorry. Alright, we understand, we understand. Pasensya na po. But then, uh, regarding po doon sa new entrance, uh, titignan na lang po namin as to the impact. Pasensya na po at minoy sa aking background. <laughs> Yung sa AFP RSBS, yung submission ninyo uh, last September 25, 
merong total assets amounting to 16.72 billion. Yung total liabilities 7.91. Of course, hindi ito naka-input do sa actuarial study. So may we hear from the uh, AFP RSBS? DND na lang. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. This yes. is uh, uh, This is uh, Lieutenant General Barinsa, retired, uh, the EBP of uh, APRSBS. Go ahead. Yes, uh, the, the submission we have, uh, we have uh, actually, uh, that is correct, uh, we have uh, 16.7 billion total assets with uh, liabilities of 7.91 uh, billion, Mr. Chair. And uh, that is not yet included in, uh, in the submission of uh, DND or AP. Yeah, thank you. So I would suggest that you also include that in the submission of the DND, no? AFP DND, do sa mga total assets, including all other assets uh, that would be made available para lang makompleto natin yung lahat ng data para pag-submit ng actuarial study ng GSI is talagang complete and accurate. Can we do that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. DOF? Do you have any uh, comment? Aside from the total can cancellation of the indexation, what other scenarios can you uh, uh, consider? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I defer to the Treasurer for, for our response? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, this is uh, Leah. So, Mr. Chair, um, we've seen already the ballooning impact of the pension uh, if we do not address uh, this issue right away and do not act now. Um, just to highlight, when we first did the uh, actuarial study in 26, uh, using the 2016 database of the military and uniform personnel, the unfunded liability then was just $5 trillion. So now that we're using uh, the 2019 database, it has already ballooned to $9.6 trillion. So we really have to uh, have uh, this as a front and center uh, issue that we have to confront. And again, we reiterate that we should already uh, address this um, uh, head on with the removal of the indexation. Because if you will see the unfunded liability, sir, it would be reduced by more than two thirds from 9.6 trillion to about 3 trillion if we already canceled the automatic indexation. Plus, of course, we reiterate that uh, there should really be the mandatory contribution by our military and uniform personnel. So um, we can work uh, together with the committee and, of course, again, with GSIS uh, and, of course, all the MUP um, units to be able to come up with a, you know, a, our unified position also on this uh, very compelling issue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Leah. Uh, just to underscore the enormity of the problem, as I mentioned earlier, yung 2020 GAA, 80 billion yung nandon. Pag submit natin o pag approve ng 2021 GAA, it jumped to 120 billion. So, ganun talaga. And this will, you know, continuously increase in the coming years. So, you are correct in saying na kailan i-confront natin ngayon to, no? We cannot wait for the 2022 budget without uh, resolving the issues involved. So, Secretary Del, ano may contribute natin from the, the NDFP? Yes, sir. Uh, my comment, sir, is that um, when we were crafting this uh, bill three, two or three years ago with uh, Secretary Sani Dominguez, ang, uh, ang aming... Uh, ang gusto nila mga mangyari is that this will be a pension fund that is uh, will be um, uh, funded for the next <clears throat> maybe 30 years because the this law will apply only to the new <clears throat> excuse me new entrants um, so if the uh, law is passed this year and uh, the new entrants will be covered by this maybe after 30 years so yun ang ating target na 9 trillion yan now the, actor, the actorial did it uh, also consider the increases on the salary uh, along the along, uh, through the years. Kasi kung akat na akat yung ating uh, salary, then uh, maakat din yung pension. 
So for the uh, removal of the indexation, sir, I think that would be possible, but uh, let us put something in the law that will also increase the pension of the pensioners uh, based on the price in the index, maybe 5% uh, of the uh, co corresponds to the inflation. Indeed, automatic indexation, but um, um, based on inflation, para hindi naman masado maiwan yung pension nila kung umakyat. So we will uh, submit to you, Mr. Chairman, our position again uh, because uh, the AFP is uh, requesting that uh, the AFP should have its own uh, pension plan. Hindi uh, kasama because AFP is military and the others are civilian agencies. We we do our duties 24 hours a day. We uh, also assign to any in areas and if there is a uh, um, there is a um, mission abroad of the uh, there is a war or whatever the AFP will be there. Now, and sa pa, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, the AFP, AFP strength is not uh, population-based, but uh, threat-based. The, the strength now is 147,000, but if we are able to solve the insurgency, we can reduce that by half. So, yun ang gusto mangyari ng AFP, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DILG. Your take, DILG, or PNP. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Lieutenant General Labina, sir, uh, the Deputy Chief PNP for Operations, uh, representing the Chief PNP. Sir, uh, considering our position uh, for the prospective application, uh, this uh, law would be passed. And so, therefore, this will only be applied to the new entrants. And considering also that we have been discussing this for the past how many years, and we have been recruiting on the sir, average of uh, six to, to ten thousand uh, recruits or new entrants uh, annually, and this adds up to the pressure to the computation, sir, na ginawa nung uh, uh, GSIS kanina. So I think, sir, there's an urgency. Of course, this has to be discussed uh, with our NACOL uh, 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 chair, the secretary, uh, Anyo, and the PNP leadership. If we can, sir, uh, immediately put a, uh, shall we say, a cut off, na para sir, every time na may madadagdag na new entrance, hindi na siya makakadagdag dun sa, dun sa additional uh, uh, computation ng, uh, ng uh, dito nga, sir, sa pension. Kung halimbawa, sir, four years nang dinidiscuss to, uh, 10,000, so 40,000 sir yung nagdagdag, kaya lumakas talaga yung pressure doon sir doon sa kanina sa ating recent. So at least meron tayong immediate sir na ma ma may babawas doon sa mga papasok sir na, na bagong uh, police. Uh, yun sir ang isang pwedeng pag-aralan of course uh, subject to uh, approval ng aming uh, ano sir, ng aming PILG uh, Secretary. Then I don't know if that is also applicable doon naman sa madadagdag na retiree, sir. Uh, hindi ko alam, sir, yung, yung uh, legality noon. Uh, parang ang kinokontrol natin, sir, yung mga mag, uh, additional na new entrants saka additional na uh, pensioners. So, meantime that we are solving yung usan natin kukunin itong pondo na, sir. So, so, yun, sir, yung initial take ko, sir, doon sa study na, na ginawa ng ano, sir, ng GSIS. Uh, yun lang muna, sir. Thank you, sir. How about the elimination of this? Saan ba natin nakopya yung one rank higher? May impact din yun eh. Maski, not, not really substantial, pero may impact din. Bakit ba kailang pag nag-retire ang pension one rank higher? Hindi ko po alam ang history. Hindi ko comment, Mr. Chairman. Ah, yes, sir. Chairman? Yes, a second. Uh, I think, Mr. Chairman, when this law was passed, yung one-rank hire was in 1979. And considering that the salary of the military and the police was so small, I think that was uh, one way of for the government to uh, at least, uh, pag nagdetay ang tao, meron naman siyang kunting pera lagdag. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is at present, hindi na kailangan yung one-rank hire, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Correct. Kasi adjusted naman yung mga salaries na eh. Malaki na yung sweldo. Yeah. Mm. Yes.
Ako, wala akong problema. Wala naman akong warang kayer eh. <laughs> anyway, sige. Uh, levity aside, sino pa ba yung... Who wants to uh, uh, give uh, his input ba? Mr. Um, Chair, this is Gretchen from the BIR. Yeah, Re Gretchen, please. Yes, um, initially, uh, you needed the valuation. Are you with the uh, asset valuation unit um, of the BIR? No, I'm with the commissioner's office, actually, and the law division. But, okay, please um, proceed. I, yeah, um, we, we received a part, I think not all, right, uh, the property set uh, for validation. But the thing is, we do not know whether the property is classified as residential or commercial. So we are not able to provide the correct valuation. So when um, the list is provided to us, we would appreciate it if the classification is given to us also. Please take note, uh, MUPs. When you submit, indicate na kung, uh, kung residential or commercial so they can... Uh, uh, you won't make it difficult for them to uh, make the evaluation. Thank you. Yeah. For that matter, even those who have already submitted to DGSIS, uh, magsabit na uli kayo sa BIR indicating uh, therein kung uh, yun nga, yung classification ng uh, property or properties listed. Cesar? Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yung tanong nyo doon sa one rank higher, nasa provision, sir, ng uh, RA 8551, yung uh, uh, aspeto na yun, sir. Thank you Thanks, for the information. Sir. So, I guess, kung tutuli natin yung hearing, kulang naman yung data, we cannot uh, finish any, anything yet. So we might as well wait for the uh, submission of the data to the BIR and the uh, GSIS. And then we'll schedule another hearing, uh, hopefully after three weeks or uh, uh, at least after three weeks. So we can have the, uh, the clear picture, the whole picture of uh, the uh, particularly the one-time infusion magamit ng uh, GS GSIS do sa kanilang actual study. So with that, Senator Rilon, do you still have the, some matters to take up? I am, I am, I am for the record, uh, I support the proposals of the chairman. Uh, we must be able to move forward. We have barely, what, a year, uh, one year to finish this, both in the Senate and the House. And uh, if <laughs> We, we, we drop the ball here. This problem will be there again for the next uh, uh, years and it will be worse and it will become worse and worse. So I would support uh, the proposition of the chair to press uh, for the uh, all the data to be in and let's put our heads together. What is the best solution given all the uh, conditions that we see today so that we can help uh, balance or, or, or help in the funding uh, of uh, this uh, retirement of our military uniform personnel. And uh, I, I would repeat, we have barely a year, Mr. Pre Mr. Chairman, to pass this bill into law. And I would support the effort of the chairman to press forward and have this uh, problem solved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You said it all. So with that, uh, we will suspend the hearing and you will be notified uh, uh, as to when we is our uh, next hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Senator Dillon. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Did you just say thank you? Yes, that's all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.